Back at WNST, Tass in Baltimore and Baltimore Positive. I have a Baltimore Positive story for you. Uh, amidst this crazy Maryland Crab Cake Tour where I'm gaining a little salt weight, a little iodine weight, as well as uh, picking up some uh, bad gastronomic uh, uh, habits here during August, uh, I'm listening to some music. I've been out on the road, and uh, when Dennis gave me the Coons Ford Bronco last week, I was rolling down listening to some serious and y'all know I love music. You know, it's my life. You know, I was a music critic doing the almost famous thing four decades ago. And anytime I can get a musician on, I do. Uh, I don't get excited by most of this anymore, sort of starstruck. But this cat is fascinating to me because I, I think serendipity has been the word of the Crab Cake Tour this month. And I guess it is serendipity that this guy from Baltimore, but a man of mystery and great pipes. And in a band that I love, when people say to me, Hey, Ness, what are you listening to these days? And I'm like, I listened to Duran Jones and the Indications for a number of years. I've been telling people that Aaron Fraser of Baltimore, of Brooklyn, drummer and sometimes singer of uh, Duran Jones and the Indications. It is a pleasure to welcome you on Baltimore Positive. I appreciate you taking a little time. Dude, I I've waited a long time. And, and get the band back. You're coming next month. I got to get in line, right? We're coming. We'll be at, We'll be in D.C. I always lobby for Baltimore. You know, I always lobby for the auto bar, but um, sometimes they, they route us to D.C. instead. But, you know, I'm happy to be here. How about them most? You know, well, let's start with the auto bar, because I want to give you my little journey with your little band. And I think everyone should listen to your band. I think they should buy your records. I think they should support you. Um, we saw you on like the CBS morning show a couple three. How long ago was that? Three years ago, four years ago? Yeah, it was probably about three. Yeah. Okay. So we saw it and I'm vacuuming in you know, my condo. I live, this is where I live. I live right at the Harbor, you know, vacuum I'm like, whoo, that's some sweet soul. That's some R&B. What's going on with that? And I'm like, eh, take a note, you know, we, so we Google you up and we're like, my wife's like, dude, they're playing the auto bar like next month. I'm like, let's go to the auto bar. Haven't been to the auto bar since I was young and sexy. So we went up to the auto bar and we had a miracle that night about Chinese food, but I'll tell you about that later. Uh, but we went up to the auto bar, we went in and my wife winds up like jamming with this beautiful lady that's a few years older than I, let's say. And we're jamming, we're, you know, Duran's doing his thing, you're doing your thing, you know, everybody's doing a thing. It turns out your grandmother, uh, you know, like, so my <laughs> wife winds up meeting your family and then we find out like, Oh, dude's from Baltimore. I should get him on the show. So it took me three years, but here you are, Aaron Fraser of Baltimore, running into your relatives at your show. Tell me your story. What's your line, Aaron Fraser? Man, um, yeah, every time I like to tell people every time I play Baltimore, it feels like my bar mitzvah again because because uh, <laughs> my whole damn family shows up to the function. Um which is fun, but, but a little stressful, you know, when you're like doing your thing and your grandparents are sitting in folding chairs at the front of the stage or, you know, whatever. They sing along. They, uh, I wouldn't say they sing along, um, uh, but they're, they're, they're engaged. They're active listeners. And I appreciate that. Dude, but, you're not um, doing death metal either. Right. Like I've been up to New York to your Berg a couple of times in the last couple of months to chase Bruce Springsteen around because that's my jam. And he's telling his life story about his parents, listening to his music and whether they accepted it or didn't accept it. Yeah. I, your music's beautiful, man. I guess in, it's sort of timeless in any era. And that's what I tell people. If you like music, if you like Marvin Gaye, if you like, yeah. you know, if you find yourself listening to good music, you know, you're going to love Duran Jones. And he, that's, that's what I tell people. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's kind of like the, the nice thing about soul music is it, it, it is, it cuts across a lot of different, uh, generations and different kinds of people races like you know even political spectrum so like you know the nice thing is like our shows have been a place where people who are different than each other like different from each other can still come together and like share something and honestly right now other than sports I think that's extremely rare don't think people come together on sports, bro. I got out of that. I've been doing that 30 years. Trust me. I've written books on that. Uh, Aaron Fraser's my guest. He's with Duran Jones and the Indication, but also um, your solo thing. Um, before I get, give me as much of Baltimore as I need to know about, because like 
you have a Baltimore background. I don't, I'm from Dundalk, right? So I'm the kid that grew up interviewing rock stars and chasing athletes 30 years ago. I've been doing this thing and I've expanded to kind of talk about people's stories and their, and where they come from. And uh, I feel like your band's on the come and on the way. And I watch you, I subscribe to all your stuff. I'm a little bit of a weird groupie at the Brooklyn bowl in New York and whatever. Um, (laughs) But you know, I, I don't know much about, anything about your band other than i love the way it sounds man yeah yeah um let's see i mean so yeah i was i mean i grew up in owings mills um so did the ravens <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you know i uh i i feel like i i definitely got to see the the ravens franchise like you know on, on the way up I, I when did like you start when, drumming when i was nine nine years old and I, I, I started learning from a guy in Mount Washington. Uh, shouts to Larry Levy, if, if he's out there in Mount Washington. Um, yeah, and he just taught me a lot about, like, you know, how to learn in different styles and how to use my, you know, a lot of ear training, just kind of like, I, I don't know, just to appreciate a lot of different kinds of music. And um, I, I fell in love with hip hop. And through hip hop, I, I found soul music from like the sampling, you know, from song sampling, I don't know, soul music from the 60s and 70s. You and- know, like I'm a little older, sampling was like such a dirty word, right? Like there was <laughs> like, like, uh, yeah, I mean, it just was your, your borrowing, do your own thing. And rappers mm. did it all the time and it was misunderstood, you know? I mean, I guess you could go back to Run DMC and like, Sugar Hill and whatever breakthrough and all that that's well documented now yeah. but it is interesting that that's what that was your hook that's what I mean I think about that with Phil Collins like who would listen to Phil Collins or Genesis or whatever other than that that drum beat being sampled becomes the most sampled drum beat in the history of the universe right right yeah I mean and so I would start I started in high school like going to Goodwills you know and uh, going into the dollar bin and looking for songs to sample myself because I loved hip hop so much that I wanted to like make it myself. You, you mean know? vinyl. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, you know, from from there, but the 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 Goodwill dollar bins and in, in Owings Mills are a little um, a little barren, you know, perhaps. They're okay. It's just you know, like, the subway it's, come downtown. You probably can find all sorts of stuff, you know. Well, that's kind of you know what happened is eventually I found my way down to like Fells Point and I found this record store called Guru 2. It was like down this alleyway behind this building, this little like shed where this guy had just like stacks of records. He's like, he was this old, really grumpy dude. And um, yeah, I, for some reason, it's just, I, I like that. I mean, shouts to Soundgarden as well. That was another place that, um, that I, I really love to go. But that was my introduction to, to really finding soul music for myself was just going out there and, and digging and just like following my eye first, you know. Um, what, 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 was, what were the five things you're looking for in those bins? What were the, the acts you were looking for that struck you? Well, it wasn't like specific acts that I was looking for. It was like, this record looks cool. This guy, I like the way this guy looks. I like the font that they were using this thing looks cool and a lot of times if you go into a record store and you just follow your eye you'll find that like a a decent amount of time that will guide you to something that your ear likes as well you know I know they say don't judge a book by its cover but actually like that that is one way when you're just digging for records for new stuff to just follow your eye and be like there's no doubt people found Pink Floyd because of the cover and then absolutely yes 100 percent like And, you know, and there's so many jazz records and I don't know, you know, like Curtis Mayfield or Gil Scott Heron, like people like that, Smokey Robinson, like those were people that I came to just by following my eye. And then uh, they wound up being guiding musical forces in in my life. You know, I ran into Smokey Robinson in the Louisville airport the day before the Kentucky Derby. You never forget where you were when you run into Smokey. Wow. I mean, you know, I mean, that's. Uh, Air Fraser's here, Duran Jones and the Indications, uh, sweet 
R and B and soul and bring in a new album and it's all over. Like, so give me your solo thing and give me your band thing and where you are right now and how people can connect with, with you and your beautiful music, man. Yeah. So I guess like, so I moved out to Indiana um, and I met Blake Ryan, the guitar player from the indications. And um, we started making like rock and roll music together. And, uh, but we, we both loved soul music and loved hip hop. So we kind of knew we wanted to go in that direction eventually. And, um, so maybe like three years into that rock and roll band, while I was living out in Indiana, uh, we met Durand who was going to school for classical saxophone, but, um, turned out he was a great singer. So we started hanging out every Sunday and making soul music together. And, um, that's kind of how the indication started um it's amazing to have more voices right and and like egos always take over but i see so many more of these ensemble acts lake street dive you know other mm. bands like that that truly yeah. are ensemble in yeah. a way I and mean, i'm an old rock and roll fan where like two guys in the band are allowed to sing kind of like the eagles <laughs> you know what i mean uh, like you you could i have well, an eagles are actually you. yeah well I, I feel like the eagles are a great um kind of like reference point because they're all great songwriters you know and with the indications it's like we have a lot of great songwriters and um just a lot of creative energy so one person doesn't have to carry the whole band and um so you know we so we started making music like that and um uh, anyway so you so started we, in indiana in indiana bloomington indiana yeah okay all right all right yeah. and and is that still bass is that home for you at this point or are you more of a it's, new york kind of act well two out of the five of us are in Brooklyn but we all kind of split up because we didn't expect for this to be our career you know we were just doing this to have fun and so when we put out our first record that was kind of it we like played one show and we were like put out this record and we were like we did it that was awesome we had so much fun that was great and you and all then, had jobs and lives and like that yeah exactly and then the record sort of through the record stores started to take off in this very organic way and we were like oh shoot we might have this opportunity the 17 so, or 18 like this is very recently right yeah it was i mean the album initially came out in 2015 i think but then it got re-released two years later by a bigger record label who kind of heard it and felt like there was more life in it in those two years you're not gigging you're not like driving around in a trailer playing gigs right you're just well i was in brooklyn like i was i was gigging playing three hour i was doing at that time man at that time i was playing between like 21 and 25 like bar gigs a month um with playing different bands just playing drums drumming and okay. a little bit of singing but um i was just nickel and diming my my rent you know um like and just doing was, covers and standards, that sort of thing. Yeah, like I walk exactly. into a bar, you're the guy, you know, with a, a stand up bass and play and the right? tip bucket. Yeah. And a tip bucket. <laughs> so that's, a be that's beautiful, dude. I want to put, so let me tell you a story to, to paint your ears a little bit. Cause my wife and I went to New York right before the plague a year and a half ago and it's cold winter night. And we went up to see the Eagles and they're playing hotel California, which they're back doing now. Right. And like all that tickets are expensive, but anything at the garden is worth it, right? So we come mm -hmm. up to the garden, and the day before, I realized you guys were playing the Brooklyn Bowl, and you were the fallback plan. You were the rain check since you went <laughs> real on me, right? So we get up to New York, get a little food in us, get a beer. We're feeling our mojo. We're in that little bar next to the garden on the corner. This is life before, it's a month before COVID, a couple weeks before COVID. And tickets went the wrong way. Like the man went at crazy. We thought we we're going to get in for a hundred, 150 bucks. Tickets went to 250 bucks, 300 bucks. I'm like, we're out. Mm -hmm. We bailed on the Eagles. We went downstairs. We got on a train. I had two of the best slices of pizza I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I came up the tube. I got a slice of pizza. We came down to the Brooklyn Bowl. I paid the 26 bucks or whatever you guys charge for the bargain that you are. I bought a couple of beers at the Brooklyn Bowl. We completely mm -hmm. grooved out with you guys all night. And mm -hmm. we, I came back. I got another slice of pizza because it's New York and it's like that at mm -hmm. 1 a.m. And then we went back mm -hmm. into the city and it was like, 
You never came to see the Eagles at all. And we loved our night with you. It was a better night. And we saved dough. And you sing prettier than Don Henley does now. So there you have it, Aaron Fraser. <laughs> How about that? All right. That's one for the trophy case, man. I appreciate that very much. But, you know, it's a, it's a small fraternity of singing drummers. So I. <laughs> 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 but they like, go back to your band because we, we referenced the Eagles and where you are. So your band isn't like it was a for fun thing. The album comes, you're gigging. Yeah. The CBS to, thing must have changed. Did, did that change your life? What what you put you on my radar? I don't know what else yeah. to say, right? So I'm, I mean, so so basically, so we put out this record and it was received really well by the like vinyl throwback soul community which is like 300 people you know what i'm saying which is like 500 people which is great but that was beyond you know what i'm saying because for us in indiana we felt like we we're the only ones in the world doing do like who enjoyed making that kind of music or collecting that kind of music and so when we put out that record it connected us through the internet to this community in the US and a little bit around the world of people who were also passionate about soul music. So we felt like that was a success. We were like, man, everybody who loves this kind of music, they've heard this record. And, um, you know, a booking agent heard our music through a record store. He walked in and the guy, you know, behind the desk was like, dude, you got to hear this. And he got in touch with us on the internet and was like, yo, so I heard this record and I love it. And then I look at your touring history and you've played one club in one town in Indiana. Like, what is going on? Like, what is this project? So he was like, let me book you a tour of like LA area shows. So we went out there, played a couple shows. It went really well. And then he booked us like one more tour um, to go down to South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. And uh, that was how we got on the radar of not only a management company, but a bigger record label that um, weirdly were actually based in Bloomington, Indiana, where we formed, but um, we weren't on the radar at the time. But they were the ones who were like, let's re-release this record and plan you like a big national tour behind it. And so that's what kind of actually got the ball rolling. That's where I found you at Auto Bar right around that yes, time? Yes, exactly. Okay. And that is what led to um, basically, well, I wonder, because that was like a re-release of our first record. And we toured for like, we basically for like a year and a half, we just went on tour nonstop. And that's what set the stage for our second record which led to our national TV appearances on CBS This Morning uh, and the Jimmy Kimmel, like late, uh, uh, the Late Show, or, or what is it, Jimmy Kimmel Live, uh, and uh, Carson Daly and Good Morning America, like those, those kinds of things. So um, that was kind of the, the progression. And then- Did you know each other well? I mean, as humans, probably not, right? Who? The band, you know, oh. like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm older, right? So I've interviewed yeah. all these bands 30 years ago that have broken up and girlfriends and money and drugs and like all the behind the music. I yeah. find it fascinating the friendships that hold businesses is what it is what it, in your life and your livelihood yeah. together that you guys aren't 18 and drunk in a band and heroin aid, you know, you come from a whole different way of looking at this, that it was almost accidental. And I know yeah. a lot of sort of the grown up bands, the black keys and these different types of bands um, made for grown ups become stars as grown ups in a way that, you know, maybe when you're 17, you're not meant to do it, or maybe it just becomes oh, a bad B movie later on, but, yeah. but the, the friendship and whatever it is, what the relationship to your, feeding yourselves is important yeah. you know and maybe there yeah. wasn't that that's really that's really interesting um you know Blake and I the guitar player we had known each other for much longer than we had known Durand um because we were in we were in the same major in college so we met each other pretty much like day one but Durand yeah you know we didn't know for for that long before we made this record and put it out the, uh, the, our first record and I will say when you tour you get to know somebody in a completely different way because 
it's an absolute grind. It's living and, with them plus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's getting in a van with somebody and everybody getting sleep deprived and sick. And, you know, it is, it, it is really a thresher. And so you get to see people, you know, you get to know them at their best and their worst. And um, I, I think in a way it's like, that's one very specific kind of, of knowing each other. But at the same time, you know, like Duran now lives in San Antonio and he has, has a life there that's like not on the road. So in a way, like he has friends out there that know him in, in, a, in a different way. Um, so I don't know, it's an interesting question, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're definitely friends. We became friends first and then started making music together. And um, that's still the, the foundation of, of, of who we are. Probably why it's gotten this far. Aaron Fraser here, Duran Jones in the indications. He does solo work. He sings. He used to gig on the side, but the band's getting big. They're hitting the road. Hershey starting this thing off. And I came up to New York one time. I don't want to bust your chops too much, but I came to New York one time and the timing was wrong. Like for the weather, I showed up at Central Park thinking you guys are playing in like the afternoon. I was seeing Streisand at the garden and I was disappointed, but then I saw you at the Brooklyn Bowl and he made everything all right. Everything's cool, but you're about to go back out and do this again, right? So give me plague life over the last 18 years. Um, man, it sucks for everybody, but I would think it really sucks for a guy who was passing the hat five years ago to try to make a living and then have a band on the Ascension. But there's also something about art, art, art and artistic reach during times of being stuck at home. You probably made some good stuff the last year, year and a half. And now hopefully Delta variant, you know, notwithstanding and mask and all that, you get to go out and do what you love to do. Right. And show it to everyone. Yeah. I mean, the last 18 months have been challenging for sure. Um, but at the same time, I feel very lucky because um, I feel like I've gotten to be a musician throughout the entirety of it. And I know a lot of people who have had to put that on hold and had to go back to, you know, I worked, I've worked a lot of day jobs. I've worked a lot of day jobs in restaurants, bakeries, hair salon, answering phones, like uh, working at like a online clothing company, doing customer service. Like what's the best job it, you ever had that wasn't drumming and singing in a band. That wasn't drumming and singing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Honestly, the very last one I did before I kind of cut the safety net and could say I legitimately quit my day job, um, I, it was the customer service job at that online clothing company because I think they, they really got it. They hired people. They said the entire customer service team were people. It was like comedians and actors and artists and people who had that job as like a side gig. And so everybody kind of had this understanding and the people, the people who employed us had this understanding that it's like, this isn't your main focus. So they weren't pushing us to do anything more than like, you know, <laughs> answering, Be doing nice the stuff people. you have to do. Yeah. And help people and, like people. And, and I think that, you know, the, the truth is like, I think a lot of corporate culture right now, especially in a city like Brooklyn is like, it's a cool office where it's not just your employees. It's like a family and you're supposed to hang out and stay after work. Nobody's really asking you to do that. It was kind of like, come in, do a good job, clock out and pursue what you actually want to pursue. And I, I appreciated that. Aaron Fraser, I appreciate his music uh, and the new album and new tunes, Duran Jones and the indications. Uh, they're coming to DC. You're going to make Baltimore happen at some point. I mean, you're going to go around oh, the world and do this thing. Um, of course. Talk about I will new say, music. Though, go ahead. I, I will say, though, just for people listening, if you want to come see us in D.C. at the 930 Club, that's on September 11th. Uh, it's almost sold out. So if you want to see us, I, that's I'm not just stoking the flames like I want you to come see us. Um, you know, I want some Baltimore people in the crowd. So don't don't sleep on the tickets because it's going to sell out. One of the issues I have is the Baltimore guys, the Ravens opened a season in Vegas that week. I'm supposed to be, it's on my calendar. It's supposed ah. to be in Vegas. I'm not sure. <laughs> the Hershey thing's definitely on my calendar. Yeah. Um, new music, new album, where you are. I, I, I don't know where, what direction when you're sort of, you're doing this timeless, ageless music to say, where do you go with it? Or where uh, will your taste move? You have put together another thing that you, you have another avenue 
to do other music. But when the band gets together and does band stuff, tell me you know, how that happens at this point, certainly during the middle of a plague. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was tough during COVID. Um, we had to take a lot of precautions, you know. We like um, everybody like isolated in their respective towns and then tested and then waited for the results. And then everybody um, drove to meet back in Bloomington, Indiana, where we all formed, you know. And um, there was something special about like while this craziness was going on to kind of like take take shelter together. We all stayed at this one recording studio and slept there. and. Um, I don't know, it's kind of like taking it back to where it started. And um, that's where we wrote a lot of the album together uh, was in Bloomington, Indiana. But we also, before that, were sharing emails back and forth of like, here's a demo. Okay, here's a here's some a vocal idea that I laid on top of the demo. Here's a baseline that I added to it. So a little bit of like mail emailing back and forth, but there's no substitute for like, um, being together in the same room and, and working on, on those, those songs together. Well, I wish you luck as you get out on the road. Uh, the, the Hershey show September the 4th, uh, Harrisburg University at the Inglewood, also playing in Philly at the Union Transfer on the 8th. Tickets are available for that, Brooklyn Steel uh, on September 10th, and then down in D.C. on the 11th of September. I've always wanted to have you on. I've always wondered. I love your band. I'll continue to promote your band, uh, and I, I hope that uh, – do you have a lot of success coming out of this? But I, I, again, I felt the worst. It's one thing for my old school classic rock guys. You couldn't go out and play their places. You guys felt like you were really on the ascension on this thing. And I hope that the momentum continues for everything that you're doing. I am here in the song. I, I think there's a genre now with Black Pumas and other bands sort of moving into that. My, my wife listens to all sorts of bands and Spotify and different things that there is a um, there is a place for people to discover bands like Duran Jones and the Indications, right? Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And I mean, you know, this tour is the biggest shows that we've ever headlined. So again, feel lucky that after feeling like the rug was pulled out from under us, like, you know, that we can kind of pick up where where we left off. Feels good. I feel lucky. Well, keep doing what you're doing. Rest your pipes, my friend. You'll be singing. We'll be listening. And uh, please do not be a stranger to the place I call home, the place that your bio called home, even though we consider Owings Mills, Dundalk, Towson, we're all in it together. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, the Orioles and the Ravens all need us. You know what no I mean? Doubt. In, in no doubt. No doubt. And do you eat crab cakes or are you a vegan type? You know, so I didn't grow up eating like shellfish. Um, oh, okay. But I have, but I have gotten, uh, uh, gotten to experience it more later in life the the lobster and the crab and definitely keep my bottle of old bay you know close at hand in the kitchen and nice. i miss the burger miss the burger cookies that's what i will say miss the okay burger so cookies. burger cookies are your thing it's easy that's easy enough all right absolutely i also love the otterbein is actually that's kind of like my my go-to because i like a crunchier cookie um but yeah i mean i, I always i always love the uh, um the Charm City Creamery whenever I'm downtown. Um, yeah, and I still, you know, pop by Soundgarden when I'm in Fells Point. Shouts to uh, Normals, actually near Johns Hopkins. That's a great record store. Um, Keep going, man. I love I love free <laughs> plugs for great places, man. Where that's, what, that's how we grow stuff, you know? Especially yeah, yeah. Normals, Normals is fantastic. Obviously, Paper Moon is like, you know, uh, a, a great spot to hit. Um, Man, you come yeah. to Baltimore, I would take you some, I, mean, I would show you some stuff, but that's why the crab cake thing. I'm doing this crab cake tour. I'm doing 30 crab cakes, 30 days. When you come to town, if you ever want to get a crab cake, continue the conversation, talk about music, sing some yeah. songs, you know, like have some fun, make, make, make a, a, a crab cake roast out of it or something. Like that. <laughs> that sounds good, man. That sounds good. Thank you very, very much for your time. Very generous and uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. You're making great music. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thanks. Putting Baltimore on the map via Brooklyn, via his band in Bloomington, Indiana, and uh, coming to a town near you. Please, by all, by all means, grab Private Space. That's the new album. Please pick up the older stuff. Check out the website. It's DurandJonesAndTheIndications.com. Aaron Fraser of Owings Mills via Brooklyn uh, hits the skins and sings a little bit too, but I'm going to save him from that. Uh, we'll sing some songs together next time. Thanks for coming <laughs> on, brother. Appreciate you.
Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Hey, Fraser, we're on the road for the Crab Cake Tour. The, the hashtag is Crab Cake Tour. Very easy. All over Maryland. Did the Southern Maryland part. Headed west to do some fly fishing with my fly guy, uh, Dan Rodericks from the Baltimore Sun, later on in the month. Back to the Eastern Shore next weekend in Cambridge, the Oxford Fair. I'm even having Smith Island cake. On Smith Island. You got to take a boat to get there. It's a long story. It'll all be on video. And if you want to know where those crab cakes come from, my friends at J.M. Clayton uh, allowed us in to watch the Olympic picking sport of these insanely talented ladies from Mexico who, who pick those delicious crab cakes we all eat. Find it all at BaltimorePositive.com. I'm Nestor. Email me anytime. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Instagram, anywhere you are. We are. WNST AM 1570 Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking. Baltimore, positive in Duran Jones and the indications off my bucket list.